mm path were defined to serve as an integration testing equivalent to dd path so where we use the petri net diagram so when we have the dynamic interaction with the multiple processor we recommend this diagram em dpn structure because it is a directed graph provides the needed framework for data flow analysis Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the second session on object oriented integration testing. So guys, before you all start watching this session, I would like to ask and I would like to request each one of you to go back to my previous session on the same chapter and then you start watching this. So guys, what exactly that I have in this session for all of you? So please check that. So I will be discussing uh, the concept of MM path with respect to the object oriented software. It's more or less, you know, what exactly we have discussed in the previous session. The concept remains same. Only that I will be discussing with respect to the object oriented concept. And then again, uh, I have uh, the concept of framework for object oriented data flow is what we need to observe with respect to the integration testing. So guys, so this is the two important topics which I will be covering in this session for all of you. So let's start without wasting much of your time. So the session starts or opens up with the concept of MM path. You will be able to observe the MM path for the next date uh, problem what I have here. So guys, what is that you have to observe here? So I have got the different functions. You can call it as a functions or you can call it as a classes. Okay, different classes is what I have. I have five different classes in this MM path. How exactly the message is being transferred from one class to another class is what I want all of you to please make a note. See, observe here, I have the message one and the message two, message three. In the same way, I have the message four and the message five and the message six. It goes on up to message 21 and I have more than that, in fact. So guys, what exactly this messages is all about and the classes is all about? So all these things belongs to the concept of next date problem, but I'm dealing with respect to the object oriented next state. Yes, this message will show you the flow of execution of this concept is what you need to remember. So fine. So this is an example, another example, which I have taken, which shows you the partial complete or is it a complete MM path? No, you have to understand. I have the partial MM path for a concept. So when it, once it comes to the partial MM path, I recommend all of you when we are discussing with respect to the integration testing, please, you need to make a note that I should have all the parts. That's the main point that they highlight here. So please listen to me carefully. Just as we saw with the unit level testing for a procedural code as a minimum, that's what we have discussed. So all the parts, what we have, this is for unit level. So, but once it comes to the next level, it is not unit level. I need all the messages which comes in the complete program is what you need to remember. So that is the most important point that you need to consider. Whenever I'm writing the MM path, it should have the complete messages. Whatever I have in that particular concept is what we need. So that is the most important point that you need to make a note. Moving forward to the next concept that I have. Guys, listen to me carefully when it comes to the framework for object oriented data flow testing. What exactly that I should understand with respect to the data flow testing, especially with the concept of object oriented. Listen to me carefully. Guys, we have been watching and we have been understanding the concept of MM path. So that's what you we have discussed just now. Right, listen to me carefully. MM path were defined to serve as an integration testing equivalent to DD path. That's what you need to understand here. So guys, we had a DD path which we have already discussed in the concept of data flow testing. Please recollect that. So guys, here the MM path for integration, the DD path, what exactly the role it was playing, that role is being played by the MM path is what you need to remember. Sir, when we have the DD path, why are we using the MM path is the next question which arises in your mind. So MM path is not so efficient at this point of time in this scenario. So that is the reason that we are going for MM path is what you need to remember. So guys, moving forward to the next important point with respect to the data. 
So you need to make a note of these two points. What are the first point that I have with respect to the data? Listen to me carefully. Data can get a value from the inheritance tree. I can get the value from the inheritance tree. Imagine I have the superclass from the superclass. I can have the data to the subclass. So that's what the meaning of this first point that they say. The second point, what exactly they are speaking with respect to, please understand, I can get the data or please observe, data can be defined in a various stages is what you need to understand. For example, I have the program. It is not mandatory that I have to declare a variable in the beginning of the program. I can declare the variables wherever I want it, but before I use it. So that is the most important point that you need to observe. And that is what they are saying here. So let's understand what exactly that I have next. When I have a concept of PetriNet, we have uh, been discussing the importance of PetriNet. So where we use the PetriNet diagram. So when we have the dynamic interaction with the multiple processor, we recommend this diagram. So especially PetriNet. So yes, we have discussed a lot of concepts on PetriNet, but what is the notations that we use in the PetriNet? So guys, that is what we are trying to understand in this slide with all of you. So guys, whenever I use this invert triangle, I will be calling this as a port input event. If I'm using the opposite to that, I will be treating that as a port output event. Whenever I'm using the circle, please understand that in my Petri net, I will be using that for a data place. And if I'm using the combination of both upper triangle and the lower triangle, so that's what I'm like, this is the diagram that I meant. So diamond shape. Okay. So I will be using this for a message sent or written. And the most important point of the diagram. So guys, listen to me carefully. So this symbol. So this gives me the method execution path. So this is what you need to remember. So don't forget the notations, whatever I have here with respect to the Petri net is what I request all of you. If you want, please take a screenshot of it. I'll just move out of the frame. Hope you have taken the screenshot. So moving forward to the next concept that I have. So guys, I will be uh, discussing some of the important things with respect to the Petri net. So usually I will be using these uh, letters to represent some of the things. But what exactly the meaning of P? P in the sense I will be usually using to represent the port events is what you need to remember. Whenever I use D in the diagram, you need to understand that as a data place. Again, whenever I'm using M, you need to understand that is going to be the message places. In the same way, I will be using the S. So that yes is used for a transition is what you need to make a note. So this is the different notations that I use and also different letters that I use to explain the concept of PetriNet diagram. So fine. So what is the next diagram or the next concept that I have? So guys, please observe carefully. Event message driven Petri nets. So guys, I want all of you to listen to me with respect to the first point. This is going to be the very important point in this slide. What exactly that I have here in the first point? Observe when it comes to the EM DPN structure because it is a directed graph provides the needed framework for data flow analysis of object oriented software. So that's what you need to understand here. So here mainly I will be focusing on the data flow. So please understand I'm trying to understand or analyze the data flow, especially in the object oriented software is what you need to remember. So guys, here I have two objects you have studied just now. Here I have two objects. What exactly the meaning of this message? Should I treat this as a message or should I treat this as a method? So method execution path. So please understand what is the meaning of this symbol? The meaning of this symbol is. So please observe guys, I will be treating that as a message sent or written. It can be anything. That's what you need to observe here, right? So fine, moving forward. So it is going to the next execution method execution. So in the same way, it is coming back to the another method execution. That's what you need to remember. So fine, keep this in mind. I will show you an example and I'll explain this concept with a beautiful diagram in the coming slides. So fine, the data place can be either an input or an output. That's what you need to remember here. Guys, whenever I say a data place, it can be both an input 
or it can be output. That's what you need to observe in the second point. Moving forward to the next slides. Listen to me carefully. Guys, consider an inheritance tree in which the value of the data item is defined in that the tree consider a data chain that begins with and the data place where the value is defined and ends with the bottom of the tree. So what is the meaning of this first point that I need to understand? So I need to consider a tree so where the data is defined in the beginning. All right, data is defined in the beginning. In the previous slide, we have discussed one point. Please remember that. Guys, when the data is defined in the beginning tree, that I will call it as a super node and that data can be inherited to the next node. That is what you need to understand. So guys, the data, whatever I have in the super class or the super node, that can be inherited. So with the help of the chain form, that's what you need to observe in this diagram. I repeat this point to all of you. Let us make it very simple and easy to understand. Guys, consider an inheritance tree. Inheritance tree in the sense what? Whenever I call it as an inheritance, so you need to understand that I have a super class and I have a base class. Is it? No, I have a base class that I will call it as a super class and I have a subclass. The data is coming from the base class to the subclass is what you need to understand whenever I speak about the inheritance tree in which the value of the data is defined. That's what you need to understand. In that inheritance tree, the value of the data is defined. And in that tree, consider a chain that begins with the data place. Chain begins with the data place is what you need to understand. This is a data place and the chain begins with the data place and ends with the data place is what you need to understand with respect to the first point. All right. So data is moving from one data place to another data place. This is what I will call it as a chain. So that's what you need to understand with respect to the inheritance. So why are you using the word called inheritance? The data what I have here that can be carried from one data place to another data place is what you need to understand. So fine, moving forward to the next point, that chain will be an alternating sequence of data place and the degenerate, degenerate in the sense it is degrading. So it is getting, the quality is getting lay by day. It is low, okay? And step by step, it is getting low. That's what you need to understand. And we generate the methods execution path in which the method execution path implements the inheritance mechanism of the object oriented language. So this mechanism, this mechanism creates, so please remember, this mechanism creates the object oriented language is what you need to understand. But my dear students, the last point is very, very important. I want all of you to please concentrate on that. This framework, whatever I have, so this framework supports me for a several form of inheritance. So what is the different form of inheritance that we have? So we have single inheritance, multiple inheritance and selective multiple inheritance. This is what I have. This is the different types of inheritance that I have. So that's what you need to understand. This framework helped me to form these different types of inheritance. So fine, moving forward to the next concept that I have. I want you all to uh, just look at this uh, diagrams. This is one of the beautiful diagrams which explains the concept what we have discussed there. Guys, I will be able to form two different uh, or two different DU paths. Okay, how exactly we can identify two different DU paths in this diagram. Can you all identify two different DU paths? So please observe the diagrams what I have here. So in the same way, I have written the DU path one and DU path two. So let's understand what exactly that I have here. So guys, in the DU path one, so the first node that I have is MEP3. So that's what you need to understand. MEP3 in the sense this from here, I am starting. Okay, the method execution path. From here, I'm starting. So what happens next? So what I have next? I have the message two. So guys, this is what I will call it as a message two. All right. So this is what I will call it as a message to send or receive. That's what you need to remember with respect to this message too. Then after that, what is the next thing that I have? I have MEP5. So it goes to MEP5 is what you need to observe. Then followed by I have D6. D6 is what I will call it as a data. D6 is what I will call it as a data. So it is coming here like this. It is coming to the data. D6. Then followed by it is going to the method execution path MEP6. So it is coming here. So it is coming to this method execution path. And then after that, it comes to the written message too. So it is coming back. So this is the message too. It is coming back. It is returning back. 
and then after that so i it goes to the mep4 so it goes to the mep4 from here it comes to the mep4 as what you need to understand and then followed by it comes to the return message one is what you need to notice and then from here it comes to the mep2 so this is one complete du path that's what you need to understand when it comes to the second path that i have here i want you all to please check what is the second path that i have mep6 it starts with the mep6 where is the mep6 can you all please identify let me just erase everything for all of you so it starts with the mep6 so please observe so method execution path from here it starts and then followed by it comes to the written message 2 this is what i will call it as a written message 2 and then after that it comes to the mep4 so it comes to the mep4 and then it comes to the message written 1 and then it comes to the mep2 this is the second du path this is what you need to understand with respect to the petri net diagram the next concept that i have here is all about the slices guys the most approach or the most anticipated approach that i have here is for slicing is it should be executable suppose guys if it is not executable it is mainly used for disk checking approach to a fault location that's what you need to understand with respect to the slices by now guys i have come to an end of this chapter so hope the information was helpful to all of you so by saying this tata bye bye to all of you